Where's your clutch at? Where's your clutch? Oh, the blade's already installed on it. That's cool. I'm gonna take this off, open it up, change the gear oil, deburr the worm gear maybe, if it's anything like the Harbor Freight one. Uh, put it all together, I have to get something to cut. Yeah. I'm gonna just see the lines first. Putting together wasn't easy. That took a while. So I don't know if it was an alignment issue, but the blade got jammed in between the bearings. I can't even get it out. I feel like the blade is bent now too. So upon further inspection, it looks like maybe the blade guides weren't adjusted right. And there was either too much gap here, or I think this top one looked like um, these two bearings were over to the side of the center bearing, so the blade wasn't right in the middle. I think it slipped off and it jammed in down, down here because it wasn't centered. These bearings here are attached to a, an eccentric shaft and you turn this shaft to open or close and align the blade on on this guy so I think that was misaligned and I got it to work again a little bit but it the blade popped off again because it was just it was already bent it was damaged so I gotta get another blade a little sooner than I hoped to Progress. I'm making a mess, but we're making progress. And that's a good thing. Oh, well, let's see. I did two things on the list. I did get a saw. It wasn't that one, but a band saw. Play. Hopefully that one's done. <laughs> Get bandsaw, adjust bandsaw. That's next. This is only a partial list. I have a long way to go. <clears throat> okay, I've been working on this thing all night. The sun's come up now, and uh, I think I'm ready to, to start. You, I'm just joking. I went home, came back. I'm gonna uh, continue to work on this thing. So I stopped by 
Lowe's and got a Bosch blade. It's uh, 24 teeth. And then I went to Harbor Freight and got also got one of their bimetal blades. This one's 18 teeth, I believe. So um, this one I couldn't find anywhere on the package or online where it said it was bimetal. So I don't know. This will be good for doing really thin stuff in vertical. Like if I, you know, if I set it up vertically like this with my little my little plate here and I got a bunch of thin sheet metal and stuff to cut and I'll put this blade on. This one's a little, I mean 18 is still kind of, still kind of thin but I think I'll use this one first. Then I got some casters so I can uh, move this thing around a little easier up off the ground. I'm going to, I watched a couple more videos last night on this thing so I'm going to do some adjustments. I might just take this cover off. I don't know, we'll see. This this guard's coming off. I already took this guard off. I'll probably just leave that off. And then there's gonna be there's definitely gonna be some adjusting going on with with the guides. That's really I think where my problem is that and possibly the tracking of this wheel. Um, this bolt here goes in and out and it adjusts the pitch of the wheel. So might have been part of my problem was the tracking maybe it, maybe it was leaned too much like this and the blade was just slowly coming off and I don't know so yeah I'm gonna be doing this for a while now I think I have a gearbox leak too it's wet down there I don't know if that's from a bad seal behind this pulley or that's just from a little extra for manufacturing. So I found a ruler that's pretty much the same thickness as the blade. About 20 to 25 thousandths of an inch, somewhere around there. Um, so I can lay this down, put these in the, uh, these guide bearings and then make my adjustment this way so it cuts straight and then you know this way also. So, and I can use this without putting the blade on there. Um, I think the first thing I'm trying to do right now though, as far as adjustments, I think that guy needs to be pushed back some so it's closer to the uh, to the pulleys. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna start there. These things, you adjust them with this one bolt here. They, they move all the directions with that one guy so you can kind of screw it up if you if you're not careful Man, it's like super smoky out here fire where's that fire coming from First round of fine tuning is done. I got the blade on there. I'm going to kick it on and see what happens. It looks pretty good. Tension's pretty good. Let's see if it let's see if it does it again. I I still think I need to <clears throat> adjust this one here this way a little bit to make it more vertical. Because my ruler, when it was in there, it doesn't account for the twist on the blade coming from this direction, twisted this way. It's putting some, it's putting some pressure on that. So I might have to keep playing with that. So I'm going to turn it on, and hopefully. It might not be perfectly aligned for this yet, but at least I'm going to try to get it to stay on and not shoot off or get jammed in the doohickey there. So let's give it a shot. Keep my finger on the 
stop button. Okay, so far so good. That's gonna have to come off. I think the, the tracking, I think the blade should be touching this backstop. I don't wanna mess with that a little bit. But it's running. That is a little gooder, much closer. Let me see if I can do it just a little bit more. I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm doing here. In my 14 and my 13. So this middle one here holds the pulley to the machine. I'm gonna loosen that up. And then this one here runs in and out, pushes on the bottom of the pulley. So I'm going to run that in just a little bit. So just a bit. Get a quarter of a turn or something like that. And tighten this one back up. The blade should suck back towards that lip. Boom. Perfect. Perfecto. All right, next, might need to bring this down just a little bit, and I also want to rotate it, I think. This one's not really touching, but there's no way to adjust that one, it's fixed. So this uh, auto stop feature isn't working. I couldn't get it adjusted enough, hot, uh, low enough, but with the way it came with these two pieces, it would stop way too high. It wouldn't even wouldn't even get to the bottom of the thing. So I took that off and raised it up with just this plastic piece on there, and it it's it won't work. It's not enough. So what I think I'm gonna do is. It's got a uh, threaded hole here. I'm going to make a little bracket to where it comes down. Hits that off button. And I think I'm going to use this. This is the guard for this side. I'm just going to cut this little cut this little end off right here and put a slot in it. for tooth per inch one over there would work better. Pretty happy with the way that cuts. Pretty square. That will work. Now it's lunchtime. Ooh, and I'll put my casters on next. Nope, you're not in it still. I know where the I know where it is. Okay. You're not in it. You're, right. you're not in Sounds it. Good. All right, so I went to put these casters on. And my wrench is too fat. 
And anything else I probably would have used, I can't find. Like, uh, I don't know, like a uh, needle nose vice grip. I don't know where those are. They're gone. Some of the tools, I mean, I could have grabbed onto the outside of this if I had some big channel lock. Actually, I do have big channel locks. No, I don't. I have those at work, too. Half of my big useful tools like that, my generic stuff at work. I brought them to work. So, basically, I put this thing to work. Fix on my three quarter inch round tubing and made some spacers. Just enough so I can get my uh, wrench in there to tighten down. I didn't find any, I couldn't find any washers that would work for it, so I'm like, you know what, let me do this. That would have been like really hard to do with impossible with a chop saw impossible with a cutoff handheld cutoff wheel maybe with like a, a cold saw or something or a lathe for sure I could do it with a lathe but I don't have one of those but yeah bandsaw to the rescue alrighty then to the rescue oh they gotta get this stupid nylon off this thing worked out good too I mean I know it's a little chintzy and it's plastic but this little stop right here Worked good for making my little my little rings. This thing I got is too high, so there's another reason why I wanted to put casters on is to raise this up. I already cut this tube down. It's got a little detent right there to keep it from coming out. I cut it up to that. It's still too tall. So casters make it easy to run the shop. Plus, I'll lift it up for this thing that I got. So I could feed, so I could f easily feed my tubing in there. Uh, this thing's heavy. Dang. Oh, I said stay. Figured that wasn't gonna hold. Damn. Back to the drawing board. <sighs> so I've decided to make little, how do we call them, bases? I'm not gonna go all the way around and connect it and weld it. I'm just gonna do. I got some of this thick angle iron. Put my holes right there and run my run my caster right there. So it'll make it a little wider, a little more stable too. I angled this thing partially to to make it a little safer. Partially to try out my angle on this thing. It worked out pretty good. I like it. I'm gonna round all the edges and everything. There, I did it. It rolls around nicely, nice and strong. I got brakes, level with this thing. Adjusted this up a little bit so I got some room to play. <sighs> I'm happy. It's always amazing how much longer things take than you expect them to. This thing, I didn't think I'd spend all day getting it like this ready to go I just wanted to get it up a little bit to match my stand that I already bought be able to cut some stuff man that was uh, that was a lot of work but here I am and I don't have time to clean up really 
I don't like leaving my shop a mess, but I think I'm going to have to. Maybe I'll come after work one day this week and tidy up. So that's it. That's it for today. Look, I got some good gussets out of it, though. So maybe next week I'll start doing some more cutting and welding of actual chassis tubes. So, uh, back to it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you next week. Peace, love, and hair grease.